Hi everyone, and welcome to a brand new series dedicated to coding in the R programming language. I made this video with the new R users in mind, especially those who want to get more familiar with the syntax and performance optimizations needed to write good R programs. In terms of getting R installed on your computer, I have included a few links in the video description below. For editing and running my code, I typically use a free development environment called RStudio. You do not need RStudio to run R, however I found that it allows you to see a lot of useful information at a glance. If you run Linux or have a Mac, then the simple terminal already built into the operating system is also enough to get started. And that's it for introductions, let's start walking through our first program. You will see that we can cover many essential topics pretty quickly. For today's application, imagine you want to estimate as many digits as possible of the number pi. Many formulas have been devised over time to estimate pi with varying precision, some dating back thousands of years. However, who can easily remember any of them? What you do remember instead is that pi can be estimated with some accuracy by throwing darts at a target. You start by drawing a circle of radius 1 and the square around it. You then throw darts randomly at the square target and count the fraction of darts that fall inside the circle. And if you throw enough darts, this fraction eventually becomes a good estimate of the area of the circle divided by the area of the square. Now, the area of this circle equals pi, since the radius is 1. And the area of the square is 4, since the sides are of length 2. So the fraction of darts hitting the circle approximates pi over 4 as you throw more and more darts. We can simulate this process in a simple R program. We first generate a random number x between minus 1 and 1 to define the horizontal position of a dart throw. We also generate a random number y between minus 1 and 1 to define its vertical position. This pair of x and y values perfectly defines the result of one throw. We iterate this process many times and finally compute our estimate of pi based on the fraction of darts that hit the circle. The more iterations we simulate, the better our estimate will be. The trade-off is that the program will also take longer to run. However, we will use a few tricks to keep runtime manageable. Finally, how do we test if a point actually falls inside the circle? The math works out that for points within the circle, the sum of squared coordinates is at most 1. And that's it for planning. We are now ready to start coding. So here we are in the RStudio workspace. Let's say we wish to throw a thousand darts and we want to assign this number to a variable. The less than sign, followed by a hyphen, forms the standard assignment operator in R. We can now check the value of our variable. And indeed, the value returned by R is 1000. Now let's create a second variable to store the number of darts that have landed inside the circle. This value is 0 for now, since we haven't thrown any darts so far. We can perform simple arithmetics on these numbers and everything works as expected. Now, to simulate a dart throw, we need to randomly generate a horizontal x-coordinate and a vertical y-coordinate, each between minus 1 and 1. For this, we use a built-in R function called RUnif. The name stems from randomly uniform variable, and the function does just that. It returns uniformly distributed numbers between a minimum and a maximum value. To check the arguments required by this function, we can take a quick look at the documentation. R has extensive built-in help on most functions, and these pages can be accessed by just adding a question mark before the function name and tapping enter. We see that RUnif requires an argument n, which defines how many numbers to return, and the min and max, which in our case will be minus 1 and 1. Now we can define our x and y coordinates for one dart. Checking the value of x and y, we see that they are indeed two numbers between minus 1 and 1. Rerunning these two lines of code, we get two new values. Every time the RUnif function is called, it returns a new random value between the specified minimum and maximum. Now, remember, we want to simulate a thousand darts, but the code so far only generates one throw. We can easily fix this by including our x and y definitions in a for loop. Let's look at the syntax here. 
The expression 1 column num darts is a quick way in R to represent a vector of consecutive integers, starting at 1 and ending at whatever value is stored in num darts. We see that this notation returns a vector of numbers from 1 to 1000. So the for loop just takes an index variable i and assigns it the values between 1 and 1000 in a stepwise manner, one value for each iteration. We thus request 1000 iterations and consequently generate 1000 different pairs of x and y values. Now we just need to check whether each throw fell inside the circle or not. We can implement this test with an if statement. This way, when the if statement condition is fulfilled, we count that one dart fell inside the circle. The final step is to print out our estimate of pi based on these 1000 dart rows. This statement first performs all the arithmetics and then prints the result on the console window. This should be it. Let's run this code a few times. Notice how these pi estimates are not very precise, and how they vary greatly between runs. To get better precision, we need to simulate more darts. Let's set our num darts variable to a higher number, let's say 1 million. And now we rerun the simulation. The for loop now iterates 1 million times, and this significantly increases the runtime of our program. The upside is that our output does look like a better estimate of pi. However, if we want to reach even better precision, our runtimes will eventually become too long. Here is where a few code optimizations can help. R is known to be relatively slow when iterating through loops, however it is very fast when performing vector and matrix operations. Let's start by bypassing our for loop, as well as the if statement completely. This code uses the ability of the rUnif function to return multiple random numbers at once. At this point, x and y are vectors of 1 million numbers each. For a given index between 1 and 1 million, the corresponding x and y entries now define one random dart throw. To get rid of the if statement, we can compute the sum of squared coordinates for all 1 million simulations at once and store it in a new variable. Sum squares is now also a vector of length 1 million. To find the indices of those entries that are less than 1, we use a function called which. This is a fairly natural sentence. We ask which elements of the vector sum squares are at most 1. And then we can just record the length of this vector, which gives us the number of darts that fell inside the circle. Notice the very handy function named length that just returns the length of a vector. The documentation explains its use fairly easily. We can now run our updated code to check for any improvement in runtime. And the difference is striking. Using the vector operations is much faster than going through long loops, and the code looks cleaner as well. Let's dial back the number of darts to 10,000. The code should finish running almost immediately. Now is a great time to visualize our results with a few plots. We have simulated 10,000 darts and stored the coordinates in our x and y variables. So now we can start plotting the results. The simplest way to plot these 10,000 points is by just using the built-in plot function. Each pair of x and y coordinates determines one point in this plot. While this visualization shows us all 10,000 points at once, it would be interesting to see how individual points are generated. We can use a for loop here to go through the first 10 entries in x and y and graph all points up to that point. The expression 1 colon i again represents the vector containing all consecutive integers between 1 and i but now these numbers are used as indexes of the vectors x and y. So this code repeatedly plots darts 1 through i, with i becoming larger and larger until it reaches 10. Before we execute this loop, let's add a quick command telling r to pause for half a second between plots so that we have enough time to see the output.
Notice how the plot scales its horizontal and vertical dimensions as more points are added. This happens because R tries to return a plot that best fits the given points. To avoid this behavior, let's specify a fixed range for our x and y axes. In our case, we know that these numbers always lie between minus 1 and 1. The output looks much better. Finally, let's add one line to this loop so that the last dart is always plotted in red. Here we use the points command since we are adding a dot to an existing plot instead of generating a brand new plot from scratch. Plotting these 10 points was a good check that our program runs fine. Now let's change the number of iterations so that we can plot all the points we have available. And that's about it for today. This was a quick introduction to some basic R functionality. As you gain more experience with R, much of the syntax will become second nature, and you will also try to use vector operations whenever possible to speed up your code. See you all in the next video for more examples and R code walkthroughs.